Yes. Uh, to accelerate our enlightenment, must mm -hmm. we throw ourselves in the throng of it? It, help, it helps for a period of time. You know, uh, it helps for a period of time. Uh, it's like anything. You do a plunge in, in something and you do something over and over. It becomes embodied. You know, it's like if you want to master any sort of art, you've got to, you've got to do it over and over until you don't have to think about it. You just do it. And it's just natural. And then that's when the, the real deep expression of that, that art comes forward. So, you know, you practice, you realize, you apply it. You practice, you realize, you apply it. And then after a while, you see that there's nothing really hindering you putting that in various places. And then part of it, again, is just knowing your own, your own pace as a human being. Does that answer your, your question? Yeah, it's just, uh, uh, it's often so difficult to face the things we most fear and put ourselves in mm -hmm. those particular relationships, environments, mm -hmm. strife and sorrow. And yeah. That's the hard. Can you do it for a, an hour? Yeah. No, that's the starting point. It's like for me, you know, we've got a we've got a session coming up, which is a an intensive um, retreat, which goes on from I don't know when we're getting up, but sometimes it's you know say four thirty and goes on till about nine at night, and there's not much sort of gap in between. The first one that I did, I counted every single period in that in that seven in that seven days, and it was like I was basically checking it off. There's like you know there's like forty of these left, and it's like oh. God, you know, I've got all, all of this to do. And th but then after a while, it's like, that just creates suffering. It's just, I'll just take care of this period now. You know, and that's, that's more the important thing is, I'm going to put things aside for this period of time. It's not going to last for the rest of my life. I'll just take care of this now. And then what happens is, then you begin to relax in the midst of these things. It's like in the, in the position that, that I had, if I'd have thought, like when I first started, that I was going to end up doing this, I wouldn't have started. <laughs> you know? But when you're in the midst of it, yeah. I lose sight of my toolkit or my center or my foundation when, I'm, when the gun is mm -hmm. me or I'm in the, cent in the midst of the, the throng. Yeah. Yeah. But you will find a way through and that's that's one of the first steps having faith in yourself that you can. You know, sometimes I don't I don't see a way through things. And I just just, you know, say to myself, it's it's gonna work out one way or another. I'll do the best I can. And then usually by by doing that then I get a few more tools that I didn't have before. And then, and then beyond that is that you don't have to carry those tools around as they become embodied. So it's not a heavy thing about remembering certain things. You just act more, this is what's necessary now. And then, you know, just do that. That's a great question. You know, it really is. And sometimes I just look at it and go, I can't do this. <laughs> and then I have to say, is that really true? What are you doing? You know? Thanks. Anyone else? Anyway, um, it's, it's funny, the, uh, the, the, the koan that I was going to talk about is about what I've been talking about. So usually what I, what I do when I uh, bring up koans is that um, I uh, use them as, as um, not as stories from, from the past as so much, is that they, they exhibit certain, certain points which, which are important. So 
the poor, the um, the thing that I was I was uh, going to emphasize was letting go of attainment, which is very is very interesting that you you actually brought that up as the first point. <laughs> sort of, you must have read my mind or, or something. Or I read everybody else's mind. I don't know, but I've got to I've got to find the the place. Okay, stepping forward from the top of a pole. Master Sekiso said, how will you step forward from the top of a hundred foot pole? Another en eminent master of old said, even though one who is sitting on top of a hundred foot pole has entered realization and is not yet real, he must step forward from the top of the pole and manifest his whole body throughout the ten directions. Mumon's commentary. If you can step forward and turn your body around, there will be no place where you are called dishonorable. Even so, tell me, how do you step forward from the top of a hundred foot pole? <coughs> That's in the book. Yeah. <laughs> the verse, making the eye on the forehead blind, one clings to a mark on the scale. Throwing away body and life, one blind person leads many blind people. Now this is this is a funny thing in the Zen tradition. Blindness is really is really valued, not you know just physical blindness, but um, there's the, there's several there's several things you know especially this particular uh, koan uh, or or point that's brought up is that um, to again to to thoroughly practice you must become blind to your own realization. You know, and just do what's really in front of you. Just take care of, of whatever it is that's there. Not hold on to a position like I was saying earlier. And uh, when it really comes down to it, is that one blind person leads many blind per people. How often have you been doing something, you know, I mean, it could be in your family, it could be in your work, and you don't really know what you're doing, but you have to take that position of leadership, for instance. And then, one way or another, it works out when you actually do it. Uh, for example, um, when I was with Maizumi Roshi, one person came in and said, wow, the center's doing really well. It's doing fantastic. And he says, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. There, wasn't, there wasn't a master plan there, basically. And then somebody asked an old master a similar question. They said... Um, what was the lifetime of teaching of Shakyamuni Buddha? And he said, one teaching in response. So one of the beauties of, say, you know, doing, a, doing a talk here and then opening it up, not necessarily talking about a particular coin, is I don't know what's really going to come up. But then the response is far more important, the living response, because that's more what happens in life. I'm pretty sure that uh, you've had those people that come round to your doors and tell you how you should live, <laughs> right? Ha haven't you had that? Yeah. Well, just just a minute. I'll just finish this sentence, then I'll come back over there. And oh, she was saying, who's had that? Oh, who, who's had that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what does that do? You know, if somebody tells you that those things, and then usually they promise you a reward at the end, right? When is that reward? I mean, no, in no matter what you, what, what you really do, when is that re reward really, I mean, in a spiritual context, when has that reward really been manifested? You know? I don't know. I mean, that's usually <laughs> what they promise, right? You, you, go to, you go to heaven or you get a planet to yourself or you know, 400 virgins of either sex, depending on what your preference is. You know? But again, is the are those things real in the, in the context? I don't mean fixing of reality, but in your direct experience of, of, of what life is. And isn't it far better if you can be fluid in terms of response? So, you know, there's four major criteria that we talk about in Zen, time, place, person, and amount. So somebody comes and asks you a question, for instance. Um, 
do you give them a party line? Young teachers usually do that. They usually give them a party line, you know. In yoga, they say this. In Buddhism, they say this. Or in Zen, they say this. Or in Christianity, they say this. An old teacher that's been through it will start to go, how do you live? You know, what's going on? They'll, they'll answer the person, but not the question. They'll see what that person can take. Um, they'll see what that, that person's tendencies are. They'll see what probably will benefit them in terms of effort or energy. And then they'll, they'll address those things, not that there's some absolute thing here that needs to be taken care of. See? So in that way, it's like becoming blind to say what my history is. I practiced in this way. I don't expect anyone else to practice in that way. Not that it's better or worse. It's just that everybody is different. So how to really apply something that uh, is beneficial in that way. Now, did you have a question or was that no, just a... Uh, you didn't. Okay, good. Now, there's, there's several things with... Uh, uh, with this particular case is that spirituality for a lot of people can be very scary beyond a certain point too. Um, and one of the tendencies with people is after a certain amount of so-called realization is that I don't really want to face the rest. You know, so then this is where spiritual materialism tends to, to come in. So if I get these religious objects, like I get, you know, if I get a, a nice statue, a protector, I get the robes, I get the beads, um, I get the cushion, um, I adopt the air of a successful practitioner, <laughs> you know, get the glint in the eye and uh, all of that kind of thing. <laughs> then maybe I won't have to deal with this part over here, you know. Now the sad thing is that if you start to face up to the shadow and the fear, is that that really brings you, takes your practice to another level because that's energy, it's your energy. I can't remember what I was talking about now, I just lost <laughs> it. a senior moment. But um, again, is the going beyond that point, the standing on top of a, of a hundred foot pole, the taking of a position, this is who I am, this is what, you know, what I do, rather than looking at, oh, they need help, that needs to be taken care of, all oh, the dishes need to be done. Um, how do I help in this situation? You know, or how do I stand back and let them take care of it because they need to mature? The using of the eye of, of uh, realization for the benefit of people. See, so that stepping off that pole is quite, is quite difficult for a lot of people. Another aspect is that people have realization and then the chasing after something and the, and the, the beauty of, say, having realization tends to become like um, a fixation. And then there's a losing sight of the beauty of the place that you stand. Again, there's a stepping off from that position and really taking one's life as, as a teaching, no matter what occurs. You know, a lot of people say, well, after 10 years of, of practice, I don't need to do this anymore. This shouldn't be happening to me. You know, and if it is happening to you, then... It hasn't been mastered yet. This is an opportunity to, for mastery. Do it. Enter into it. Take care of it. You know, this is the teaching that needs to occur. You know, over and over, if something hasn't been mastered, it's going to arise over and over. And that's one of the beautiful, compassionate aspects of life. Is it keeps giving you an opportunity to take care of it. How can this work? How can this be, happen? <coughs> 